Amen. Amen. God is good. All, All the time. time. Every of the time. <laughs> <laughs> How many know it today? Oh, Sunday. Sunday. On Sunday. I mean, I do. <laughs> today is exactly one week before the resurrection of Jesus. A holiday Amen. celebration. Celebration of Jesus and resurrection. <laughs> um, today marks the beginning of his journey to the cross and his triumphant entry into Jerusalem to take that cross for the redemption of our sin. Amen. 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 Um, if you would, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 21, verse 1, and we're going to read through 6, or 7. If anybody has a Bible for Anthony, that would be awesome. <laughs> Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 through 7. I'm a new King James Version, just so I'm going to get Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Everybody there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> says, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, and a colt the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went, and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And, you know, after reading that, I would like to take a, a couple minutes to, to go over a couple things. It says that Jesus had two disciples go to the opposite village to get a donkey. And the significance of a donkey is really, really important. Because when Jesus was on his journey to the cross, when he entered Jerusalem, he wanted to represent humility. And a donkey is actually one of the, the lowliest animals that can be saddled. You know, the, one of the lowliest animals that you can ride upon. And what better way to represent, you know, yourself as a humble servant, um, as, you know, an ambassador of the kingdom of God, than to come in such a form of lowliness and of, of you know, showing your heart that I want to serve you. I'm not better than you. Amen. And that's what he did right there. And, you know, most kings back in that era, they would like to show their dominance or their stature, you know, their royalty. Like, you know, they wanted to have this big old, you know, presentation. Look at me. Look at how, you know, um, austere I am, if that's the word I'm looking for. And, but they would typically come in on horses, like large horses, white stallions, those sort of things. And a horse actually represents war, to where a donkey represents peace. Hmm. And so when Jesus came in on the donkey, he was immediately showing his intention was to Amen. bring peace. Amen. He was there to be peaceful, to show the grace of God. You know, he didn't want to come in representing war or representing something that wasn't of his nature. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. Another very important thing to note <laughs> about the donkey is that it was used to fulfill the prophecy that was actually set in place hundreds and hundreds of years ago in Zechariah 9.9, if you would like to turn there. It says, um, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. It actually elaborated at Matthew 2, but I'm going to read it again in Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just in having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And you know, <laughs> this kind of came to mind earlier. It's kind of a side note, but if you think about the popular donkey in the uh, cartoon Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore. He's always sad at Eeyore. He's always depressed. He's always really just chill. But being one of the lowliest animals, I guess, what does he really have to brag about? <laughs> yeah. You know, I might be depressed too if I was a donkey. <laughs> but, um, I mean, imagine if, if somebody came riding into your village on Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> 
ain't nobody gonna take you to be intimidated by any, any, any sort of king if you're on Eeyore. Oh, guys. So, you know. And I thought that was genius, and that's probably why they made him that way. It's because he represents peace, and you're not gonna find any sort of contention with a donkey. So, I don't know, side note, I just thought that was funny, that occurred to me. Um, but what's really cool about that is that the Lord had ordained something hundreds and hundreds of years ago through that pop prophecy from Zechariah, and he was faithful to bring that to fruition. And, you know, it reminds me of what we've been studying um, on Wednesdays in Philippians chapter 1, verse 8. Being confident in this very thing, who has begun a good work in you, he will bring it to perfection and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that just shows the faithfulness of God. All those years ago, he was faithful to bring that to fruition, to make that happen. And, you know, Jesus will never leave or forsake you or your situation. And that just shows the faithfulness of God. Amen. And I thought that tied in really well with Wednesday. But if you would, um, flip with me back to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to continue reading from 8 to 11. If you there, give me an Amen. 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 Okay, verse 8 says, And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And what I thought was really interesting is when the Lord had came to the town, they spread their cloaks on the road, or their which means their coats or their garments, as well as palm branches. And back in that time, that was the the best or most suitable way to show honor was to cover the pathway of somebody who was coming who was meant to be revered. So them laying those things down was actually showing somebody they were worthy of the highest honor. And it's like that'd be like taking our clothes off so, you know, pastor can walk on our clothes, which sounds crazy. But back in that time, that was showing respect. That was showing the honor like for the, who they knew was important. Like the red rug they roll out for, like, the king. Or yeah. I guess even weddings they, you know, roll the runner or whatever. Yeah, I guess even Hollywood at that point, the red carpet, yeah, yeah. they roll that out because they're so fancy. But... Yeah, so I guess we see examples of that happening today. But um, we see in the scriptures that they use palm branches. Um, if you would, could someone please go to 1 Kings chapter 6, 29, and somebody else go to Revelation 7, 9. And we will see the importance and the significance of all of the palm branches. 1 Kings what? 6, 29. And Revelation 7, 9. Do you want something to read? No, you can't. Yeah. Okay. Scott's got it. And then who wants to read Revelation 7-9? Darren? Okay. Scott? 629. Then he carved all the walls of the temple all around, both the inner and outer sanctuaries, with carved figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. There. After this, I behold, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds, and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Amen. The palm branches were used to cover the way the Lord back thousands of years ago, on top of it being the same thing they held up in the last recorded book of the Bible in Revelation. Now, after what we just read, what might you think what a palm branch represents? Any idea? Very, like, pretty, like, appealing to the eye branch. Okay, good. Anyone else? That was not a way. Like a very large branch able to cover the road? Using natural resources. It's okay. very green. <laughs> Back in that time, a palm branch represented uh, goodness and victory. So when Jesus was coming, they paved the way in palm branches. They were showing the goodness of God as well as him being victorious. 
Last book of the Bible, Revelations, guess what? He's still good. He's still victorious. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know? And Thank I think you, Jesus. that's just so cool that that's good. the continuity from then and now, he's still of that same honor <clears throat> that showed him back then to what he is now. Amen. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter 21, verse 9 now, if you're still there, says, The multitudes cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Um, and this was happening, they were shouting Hosanna when um, Jesus was walking on over the palm trees and the cloaks and all that. The term Hosanna is actually defined as save us, or to shout or praise of adoration. So when people knew who Jesus was, they seen him coming on a donkey, they seen his intention of peace, they knew he, that Jesus could deliver them. That's why they were saying Hosanna or save us. But the scripture also says that there was some uh, that they depict as Pharisees in the crowd who were actually saying this to mock or ridicule Jesus kind of in a sarcastic way. Like, ooh, save us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but Luke chapter 19, verse 39 through 40 says, And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd. They said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered and said to them, I Check tell you, yes, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. And you know what? If we aren't the ones to share the hope of Jesus, if we aren't the ones to make Amen. way of the Lord, if we ain't the ones to share that gospel, the stones would do it for us. And I refuse to let that happen. Amen. You know, today is one week before the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. And today, you know, I just want to encourage everybody to, to not be afraid and, and not look at life as being um, just another day on the job or just another day at the gym or whatever. To use those things as a mission field. Start your day mission-minded. And especially with next week being Easter, that is the most, sad to say, religious holiday of the year. But that's when all family and friends come out. So it's really our turn to capitalize on these yeah. things. Mm -hmm. It's our turn to really, you know, show the love of God and share the truth and love as we've been learning about. And, you know, God is just good and faithful. And I was, as I was doing this, um, this research and this study on, on Palm Sunday, I was just really blessed by it. And I want to show my most honor and respect to the Lord. I want to show him, I mean, not necessarily palm branches. I don't even know where you get those, Florida maybe. You know, but I want to show that God is good. I want to show God is victorious Amen. with my life, with my actions. And um, just, you know, use, use this time as, as a mission field. You know, go throughout your day mission-minded. And just know that, you know, God's faithful. God's good. And um, don't be afraid to show humility, you know. Amen. Um, even simple things like the basketball court. If something happens to where <laughs> you know you was right, hey, just let it go. You know, Jesus took the low road. He rode in on Eeyore. We can do the same thing. <laughs> you know. But um, let's pray. In Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for, for Palm Sunday. We thank you, Father, for, for this time leading up to your resurrection, to the celebration of your life, raising from the grave, Lord, rolling away that tomb. Death cannot hold you, Lord. Yes, Death, where is your sting? That, Lord, the grave cannot handle you, Lord. We proclaim the same thing over our lives. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for just being triumphant, victorious, Lord. We, uh, we just love you, Father. Um, allow us, Lord, just to treat life as a mission field, Lord. We just pray that we can just touch family and friends for you, for your goodness, Lord. Show everybody the love of God. Um, we just pray for a great day today, Lord. Thank you for touching our hearts. Thank you for just uh, making a spark come alive in each and every one of us, yes. Lord. Yes, we pray, Lord, that we can just walk in humility, walk in love, and show that you are good, show that you are victorious, Lord. Um, and just thank you, Jesus, for for making your way to that cross and enduring the pain you knew you had to face even though you didn't deserve it. Right. Lord, and thank you, Father, for taking our Amen. place when we send all those sins, Lord, but you gladly took that debt for us. Yes, so thank you, Jesus, Father, for just redemption of mankind and just allowing us to be um, uh, mission-minded and, and more ready and willing, Lord, to serve you in humility and spread the truth and love, Father. We just give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.